What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network, here where we go step by step through the procedure of buying a couple of Satoshis on the beautiful marketplace, which is the BISC Network. And of course, we have already in the last couple of shows uh, done the step by step procedure, uh, but we have left out one important part. How is it actually that this is a truly trustless uh, fashion? And uh, we have seen and, and skipped previously that there is here a arbitrator, right? There is this one other individual other than Satoshi and Halfini that is part of this transaction. Uh, well, who exactly is this? Uh, well, the procedure is as follows. When Satoshi is selling Bitcoin to Halfini, then first Satoshi is depositing uh, the, a couple Bitcoin in a multi-signature scheme. And this is according to this address right here in this transaction ID. We see there are three different signatures uh, being proposed uh, as part of this multi-signature. One of these signatures is of Satoshi Nakamoto himself. The other one is of Halfini, right? So the first two are the two trading partners. And this third uh, signature that is specified in the release script is the signature of the corresponding arbitrator uh, right here. And so let's, let's go step by step through the game theory of what could happen. Either we have uh, Satoshi putting the funds into this multisig, uh, and then uh, he receives the euro from Halfini, but decides to just take off and run away. Uh, and well, that would suck for Halfini, because he is, of course, he has sent uh, his euros, and Satoshi has received these euros, but he does not get the Bitcoin in return. Uh, well, he only has one signature himself, and Satoshi is not going to give his signature. Uh, so initially, the funds are locked up. But good that there is an arbitrator uh, that can be appealed to by Hal Finney. And then after some human interaction, this is not an automated process, but after some communication and some proofs that the euro payment has actually been sent, the arbitrator can decide. Uh, if Halfini really did send the euro, and if so, well, then he can provide the second signature, and Halfini, together with the arbitrator, can release the Bitcoin out of the multisig. And well, Satoshi has the euro, Halfini has the Bitcoin. Perfect. Uh, then, on the other hand, what would happen if Satoshi um, puts the funds in the multisig? But then Halfini just takes off and uh, disregards the privately and agreed upon contract. Well, this would mean that uh, health, uh, that Satoshi has lost the Bitcoin initially, right? They're frozen up in this multi-sig. Satoshi has one signature uh, and he does not get the signature of Halfini. But again, Satoshi can appeal to the arbitrator uh, and lay out his case and prove that uh, these, uh, the euro payment, in fact, was not received. Uh, and then the arbitrator can judge this case and make sure that, okay, no, actually, the euro payment was not done. Uh, and then the arbitrator can give his second signature to Satoshi. And again, two out of three signatures are there. And this means that the euro stay with Halfini because he never initiated the euro payment. But Satoshi Nakamoto gets back um, the, the, the Bitcoin that he himself put into this multi-signature wallet. Uh, so far, so good, right? And, and further, the arbitrator actually has no chance of stealing the money. He does not have custody because the arbitrator alone only has one out of three signatures. So clearly, this means that he cannot steal the money and run away with it. But he needs to cooperate with one of the two other individuals. Uh, but only if there is something going wrong. And the trade that we have proposed, uh, we got both signatures from Hal and from Satoshi, two out of three, and the arbitrator was not even involved in the entire process. And this is all nice and good, but there is some some little tiny thing missing here still. And that is a game theoretical concept uh, of the security deposit. As you have seen, Satoshi Nakamoto, the seller of Bitcoin, had to put 30% of the funds before he actually started trading 
into this multi-sig as a security deposit. So in the case that Satoshi takes the euro and runs away with the Bitcoin, not only does he still, after the arbitration, lose the Bitcoin that he put in the de uh, deposit, but also the additional 30% security deposit. Right? Okay, so this is this is a additional punishment for Satoshi if he does not play by the rules. And on the other hand, if Helfini uh, did not send the euro payment, uh, he of course broke the private contract, uh, which then means that he will lose the security deposit of 10%, which is also in the multi-sig wallet. Uh, so this game theoretical concept um, of not just having the multi-sig, which is cryptographically proven, right? but also having this, this meat space, this human uh, game theory, where if you break the rules, right, the rules that you agreed upon, well, you also lose the security deposit, which is, of course, not in your best interest. So this is a, a really rather simple but very compelling solution, right? Uh, you, of course, you have to lock up the funds before as a security deposit, I mean, if you're honest, you're going to get the funds back and you don't give up custody, right? Uh, so that, that's always nice. Um, but then on the other hand, if you are trying to steal from someone, there's a huge, huge cost for that. Not only the security deposit, but just also involve the trickery of tricking the two out of three multi-sig. And somehow, um, Helfini would have to convince Satoshi to release the second key uh, or the arbitrator, of course. But if both parties are honest, the arbitrator can sit on the couch and not do anything because, well, everything is fine, right? It's a voluntary and correctly done uh, private contract. No need to involve anyone else. Uh, so this is truly a, a beautiful, beautiful, not just crypto uh, cryptographical system, but also a game theoretical system to an extent that... Uh, According, according to, to Manfred, one of the creators of BISC and um, active developer, there was not yet a single Bitcoin lost or stolen uh, on the BISC uh, trading platform because it just is a sound concept. Uh, and well, I mean, it's free individuals and usually free individuals always uh, uphold their privately agreed upon contracts. Uh, so this is the entire arbitration process in the BISC decentralized exchange. And it's simple, but it's pretty damn good. And it just shows that free individuals can, without any coercion, without any aggression and violence, live peacefully and do trade and do their business while still minding their own business. I just, BISC is so beautiful. And it, it is proof that this market system works so much more efficiently than any government coerced and forced a rule set uh, that is uh, forced upon other individuals. Well, Pierce, as usual, thank you very much for joining me here uh, in dissecting the arbitration and multi-sig scheme here on the World Crypto Network. Pierce, thank you very much. And as always, bye-bye.